this piece starts off with a lot of intensity and it really uses the bass in a in a lot of really interesting ways but as as it gets into the middle of the piece it struck me that the piece starts feeling very vocal in spots and you do a lot of work with with your voice as a performer i was wondering if your work with voice if you feel like your work with voice has informed the way you write for instruments oh absolutely yes um i mean i'm a firm believer that you can never isolate your artistic practice from your identity and absolutely i mean the way I sing and inflect a vocal line is very much, there are some melodic fragments in this piece in that middle section. And those are very much these kind of sobbing kind of gestures yeah. um, where, you know, when you're working with a classical musician, they spend their whole, you know, lives training to make a single bow, a down bow sound exactly like an up bow and this beautiful connected even sound. and. Right. then I come in and say, actually, can you not, you know, um, <laughs> can you inflect in a way that is deliberately uneven? Can you take mm -hmm. some of that, um, that evenness out of the sound? Because I think um, mm -hmm. once you can kind of deliberately break those, some of those, that classical pedagogy uh, mm -hmm. within a performer, that's when you start accessing some more interesting parts of the instrument or different sounds or different gestures that maybe um, are, are a little um, a little more other. I'm not really sure what word to use other than that. Just something that, that feels um, liberating within the, the confines of the instrument. Uh, as a vocalist, I'm not a classical vocalist and I have had a fair amount of classical training, but um, you know, when it comes down to it, I sing country music and a lot of American folk music. And I love to just belt my heart out, which is the last thing that classical vocalists do. So this kind of let me take this instrument, my voice and find myself in it. I feel the same way when I'm working with um, instruments like bass or any of the standard orchestral instruments. Yeah. And I think I think the result is something that that does feel sonically very personal even as it's, you know, very much a bass piece. I, I'm glad you feel that way. I said this piece was very personal for me. So um, I'm glad that comes across. The piece is called Quell. Can you tell us how you got to that title? Sure. Yeah. So um, I wrote this piece. I began writing this piece shortly after the 2016 presidential election. And that I think was one of the first, aside from September 11th, 2000, 2001, that was one of the first moments in my life where I felt there was this huge upheaval within kind of our entire society in the US. Mm -hmm. And obviously a lot of, <laughs> a lot more has happened since then. Right. Um, but this was one of the first moments I really felt that in my life. And I remember it just, I felt like there was so much chaos and mm -hmm. so much dialogue but also a lot of shouting and screaming and i often didn't know how to feel or how to take that in and mm -hmm. um and i was also grieving the the results of the election and i really just wanted to find a quiet space within myself so mm -hmm. the piece is essentially um that a quelling of emotions and it begins with the closest texture I could find to a scream within the bass, mm -hmm. which is low grumbling, ripping, shredding kind of beginning. And then that mm -hmm. eventually calms down into a place that I think is uh, kind of much more of an internal reflection. Like it, the, the performer finally does find that spot. At the mm -hmm. end of the piece, it goes back into that, the chaotic uh, realm again, but that's, um, Maybe that was foreshadowing uh, COVID. I'm not sure. <laughs> or it's just the nature of the world we live in. Yeah. Right. And that our life is very much a sort of transition between those exterior and interior elements. Definitely. It's a constant loop, right? 